The regular season is just about here. Let's give our official final preview. The coaching, the players, how do we think they'll do? Let's do it all right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Thank you for making this show part of your daily routine. I'm here for you Monday through Friday, plus, plus, like this Friday when they play a game, bonus podcast, whenever they play podcasts after the game. So sometimes six, sometimes seven podcasts a week. So subscribe. This show is free. It's available everywhere podcasts exist. It's on YouTube. You can watch the show on YouTube. Hop into the comment section. Best way to communicate. Join a real big growing Celtics community there in the YouTube comments. I'm John Corrales. I played ball a long time ago. Now I'm sitting here as a beat writer, covering the Celtics, watching the Celtics every day, analyzing the Celtics every day for you. Today, well, it's time to, to, to break this all down. We've talked and talked and talked. Let's get our official preview, our official, this is how we see it going. Tom Westerholm, at Tom underscore NBA underscore boys, right? With Tom, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm excited to. Uh, I feel like we're jumping the gun on this preview because, like, you know, oh. it's uh, this is this is like this is the Tuesday show, right? Yeah. We're recording this on Monday. This is a Tuesday show, so that means there's a whole nother night before the Celtic season starts. Oh, there's so much to talk about. All we'll, right, we'll preview it again. We'll review it preview. again. Two official previews. We love. Yeah. That. Yeah, why not? Today's show brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Lockdown NBA, twenty dollars off your first purchase. Um, let's let's start here. We've talked about this a lot, but the coaching, the coaching is is the, I think, was seen as maybe the biggest weakness coming into this season for the you know people were always like, oh Joe Mazzula, you know they're never going to get anywhere with him. But this also accounts for the the, the assistant coaches and stuff. And then in over the course of training camp. A lot has come up that I think adds to our previous Joe Missoula podcast. So I think where I want to start is Jason Tatum saying that Joe has done a lot to change the culture from last year, which says a lot when your best player is talking about the head coach changing the culture. And that's like accountability. That's how you're practicing. That's the, the focus in practice. The stuff that they weren't focusing on last year, they're now focusing on this year. I I think the coaching, I'm not ready to say it's turning into a strength, but when you factor that in, when you factor in Sam Cassell having seemingly a big impact, when you factor yeah. in just the attitude that's being fostered around this team, uh, Joe Mazzula inviting all of these legends here, and now, now Rajon Rondo's at practice kind of like, run, you know, running drills and stuff. I like where the coaching is. I really like where the coaching is. Um, let's start with your thoughts there. And then, you know, I, I, I want to say it out loud. So we get to it challenging the notion of what Missoula ball really is, but your initial thoughts here, having seen the preseason on the coaching. Well, I think the biggest thing, I don't want to say the biggest thing. I mean, I think the biggest thing is the thing that we've talked about a, a thousand times, which is that Joe Benzula has another year on his belt. He has all this time to prepare, blah, blah, blah. We've said that a thousand times. I think that the second biggest thing is that we have now an established assistant coaching core that Joe Missoula has built up and that Joe Missoula and that the Celtics have put together and that everybody is like, you know, that this, this group is here to, you know, the, this this team is here to play basketball for Joe Missoula, and these assistant coaches are here to help Joe Missoula. And there is just it, it is established and it is concrete and it is just kind of meaningfully put together. It was put together on purpose, intentionally. This, you know, this 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 isn't something that's been thrown together at the last second. This is something that was that was built and that can, you know, that the Celtics can 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 try to move forward with. I think I, I just 
I, just, I, I think that that is going to have a profound impact on what happens this year. Like, I mean, how many times last year did we talk about like, well, you know, Missoula was thrown into the fire. Well, you know, Ime Udoka put this team in a tough position. They can just move past all that. That's all over. It's officially over. Right. They've, right. you know, they've, they've got all the guys that Joe Missoula wants coaching with him. They've got Joe Missoula himself. I, I really believe that that is going to be a massive difference. And, and I mean, you know, you talk about changing the culture, you talk about, you know, you star players, you know, speaking in, uh, for, in, you know, for, for Missoula on his behalf, like, you know, these are the, these are the things that can happen when you actually get to put together the, the project that you want to put together when you're in charge of the team. So yeah, I think this is going to be a, uh, I, I think that this is going to be a, a massive change in that way. We asked Jalen Brown, um, cause Jalen, as I get a <coughs> wrong, wrong pipe moment, <coughs> Um, I thought you were done. I was, I was, I was ready to keep trying to uh, yeah. talk you through I, it, but, uh, no, yeah. I'm fighting through it. I'm fighting through <laughs> it. I just turned my ankle and I'm, yeah. I'm limping my way up the court, but I'm going to, it's going to feel good. Yeah. Um, so Jalen said at practice on Monday that this was the best preseason, probably one of the best preseasons I've been a part of. So natural. Why? Why Jalen? He said, just clarity. We've been real clear in our roles. We've been clear in what we want to get accomplished. We're clear in what actions we want to get into. Late game, three for two situations, two for one situations. We've been able to really establish exactly what we want to do. It's been really good coaching this year. That is everything. So Jason Tatum saying he's changed the culture. Jalen Brown saying it's been really good coaching this year. Everybody's talking about the team drills versus individual drills stuff like that that's all important and it's also important to note that we we came up with this concept of Missoula ball like last year it's just been three 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 and Joe has been clear both on the record and like not off the record but the recordings are off and he'll just stick around he's done this like two three times this year we've been done with the interview and he'll like stick around. And be like, hey, so anyway, so this he is what I mean. He just likes you guys so much. He just likes he, you guys. I mean, much. what's not to like? What's not to like about us? Um, but and he he said, like, look, that Charlotte game, that that's what we want to be. Like, we want to be in transition, we want to get those layups, we want to get into the post, we want to get putbacks. He wants to outshoot the team, not three pointers necessarily field goal attempts. And he made it a point to say recently that one of the problems last year is they didn't get the field goal attempts necessary to, to, to win games where they didn't shoot well. Right. So the concept is, you put up a hundred shots, you don't shoot well, but you shoot well enough that the volume has keeps you in the game. And you have now, a, a, you put yourself in a position to get some stops and kind of like steal one of those wins last season. They didn't, they didn't do any of that. You, they shot poorly. They lost Yeah. this year. I want people to understand that this is Joe Missoula's philosophy. This is what he's trying to do. He wants to get out in transition. He wants to get those putbacks. He wants to get into the post. We've seen Jalen, We've seen, I have a piece on Boston Sports Journal, which is free right now. Uh, Sam Cassell trying to unlock Jason Tatum. All of this can take away some of the three-point shots. They don't have to get 50 of them up. They'll get 40 of them up yeah. if 60 other shots come from transition, putbacks, post, good offense. You know, sometimes, obviously, there's gonna, there are going to be two-point shots that you take. It's not just entirely about putting up all the three point shots. It's not just, Hey guys, just first chance you get to take a three, forget everything else. Um, we're, that's all we're going to do. I'll give you a chance to respond to that in just a second. First today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book because they do things like when you're new and you sign up at fanduel.com slash locked on, you place a $5 bet. 
you get $200 in bonus bets. That's what America's number one sports book does. So NFL, you want to get bet on football? No problem. Basketball, Tuesday night is opening night in the NBA. Wednesday is the Celtics season opener. Plenty of time to get in on the action. The simple things, spreads, player props, over-unders. You can build a parlay and, and do like two or three or four bets together to increase what you might win. You can do it all at fanduel.com slash locked on. That's how you sign up. That's how you get the deal. $200 in bonus bets. Win or lose on your $5 bet. So go check it out. Fanduel.com slash locked on. Fanduel is an official partner of the NFL. Just ask you, if you're going to gamble, go for it. Please gamble responsibly. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. The Locked On NBA season preview is here. A six-episode series with all 30 of the Locked On NBA team shows, including this one from Contenders to Tankers. I was on the Contenders podcast. You can see that on my YouTube feed, on the audio feed. Just know that the Contenders podcast was recorded before the holiday trade. You go to the end. There's an addendum to that after the holiday trade. So there's there's just that little caveat, but you can catch all six ep- episodes on the Locked On NBA feed or on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Let's get back to our discussion and Tom Westerholm. Uh, after all of the stuff I said about Missoula Ball, uh, I know you had something to say, so <laughs> hit me. No, I mean, I think this, like, again, stuff that we've covered before, but I think this, I think it all makes a lot of sense, right? Like, I mean, for one thing, they looked phenomenal in that Hornets game. Like, I think I texted you about halfway through it. We, you know, again, something yeah. that we can't say on the pod, but like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, they looked yeah. incredible. Like, they, yeah. they looked like every bit the contender that, you know, you would expect a team that, you know, made it to the Eastern Conference finals and then shuffled some things. Like, you know, you expect to be a contender if you do that kind of stuff. And they looked every bit that during, during, often during the preseason, but especially during that Charlotte game. Um, but I think, you know, like, Missoula Ball, again, you talk about him throwing things together at the last minute. What is more thrown together at the last minute than taking a a good thing, right? Three point shooting and an efficient thing, three point shooting, and just making that your whole identity. That is like, I mean, that's a tailor made way to like, if you've got good players, that's a perfect way to get yourself up over the 50 win mark and just an imperfect way to build an NBA team. And I don't, I think, I don't, you know, Brad Stevens is a brilliant basketball mind, and he yes. believes, I think correctly, like Joe Missoula is a brilliant basketball mind. Brad Stevens, who is brilliant, thinks very highly of Joe Missoula. I don't think that if Joe Missoula's big idea as a head coach was, hey, let's just gun three-pointers and hope for the best, I don't think Brad Stevens right. would think very highly of him as a head coaching candidate. So. Yes, I think now we're starting to see what Brad Stevens liked so much about Missoula, what he liked about the potential there. And uh yeah, I mean I'm honestly I'm just I'm excited to watch it, man. Like I'm excited I'm I'm you know, like the last couple of years of Celtics basketball have been, you know, fun and like entertaining and like, you know, good stuff there, but this is just such a such a unique um start to a season. Like I'm I'm excited to watch what Missoula has for has with these guys. Yeah, and and I think we're only just getting started because we haven't been able to see the Celtics against anybody like they haven't played right. any regulars uh for any extended period of time so there's still more to 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 put in and he'll play around with the starting lineup and he'll play around with some of the rotations and uh it it seems like he's going to be fluid with all of that stuff and guys are aware some days you might start some days you might not. Some guys, like the Delano Bantons of the world, some days you'll play and sometimes you won't. Everybody get that into your head now. And I think if there's anything, you appreciate at least being up front. You know, yeah. if I'm in, if I'm sitting there in that locker room and the coach is telling us all this, be like, hey, look, man, understand who the top six is. We all know who the top six is. The rest is like you got a couple of guys we know that are going to get a little bit more opportunity. The rest of you guys could be on a day-to-day basis. So, you know, come to grips with, you know, talk to whoever you need to talk to, come to grips with it now. If you don't like it, let us know. We'll figure something else out. And, but if, but this, if you're here, this is the deal. 
And it feels like they've all been told that because it's the players telling us this. It's not like the coaches, the players tell us this, the players understand. And when I see the players out there, it feels like Tatum is showing me more. Derek White is showing me more. Um, Jalen is Jalen Brown. I haven't seen like a ton more from him, but like it's, it, if we get Jalen from last year, that's fine. Right. Um, Um, He's an all NBA player. So we'll see if the, if there are elements to his game, if there's new, but Tatum is adding an element. He's adding a back to the basket. Derek White is just, I I don't know. He just keeps getting better. Uh, Peyton Pritchard has shown uh, more. Um, There are key guys here that have shown more. And the other guys are just showing us great stuff. Even if it's like no one, I don't see regression from anybody so far. And then you throw in the new element of Christoph Porzingis and everybody on the Celtics podcast world, every one of the (laughs) writers, I think we all have the same reaction when it comes to Porzingis. Oh, wow. (laughs) He unlocks a lot. Oh, damn. Oh, that was really good. (laughs) <laughs> That's going to be very difficult to stop. Yeah. So from a player perspective, you add the the just individual talents and it's like, okay, they all understand. I think the, the, the top six understand how to play with one another. They all understand like a little bit of the sacrifice that's going on. And I think I, I feel like there's a whole lot of same page that we're seeing. At least I know it's preseason, but it's, I feel like everybody's kind of on the same page. Well, I think it's easy to be on the same page when things are as easy as it is when you got all this talent on the floor, right? Like, right. I, I mean, like, especially, okay. So like Porzingis is a good example, right? Because he's, you know, he's, he's a new element to all this. Like we've talked about how, you know, this is, this is a better opportunity. I mean, Luka Doncic is, a, you know, a singular talent, no question about it. And like, you know, great guy to play with, but like you can deal with a star duo, You know, like you can find a way to deal with a star duo if you have to. It's a lot harder to deal with like a star trio or a star. What's a four? Uh, A star quad quadro, like a star, whatever we got. And you can keep going up to six, right? Like, because that's how many that's how many good players, like really good players the Celtics have. Like it's, you know, like a quartet. Right. Sure. A star quartet. Um, But okay, what's six? Uh, sextet. sextet. Yeah, See, it's, it's weird because it goes duo trio, and you want to go quattro. You want to go with that same kind quadro, of thing. Yeah. But then you go quartet, quintet, sextet, septet, octet, nonnet. Yeah. yeah. So. So. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I think you would call the Celtics a sextet, and uh, man, they're like it's it's so, you know, it's just so different for Porzingis. I feel like when you're when you're looking at you know all these other options that are around you all the space that opens up for you for, for all these guys and, and what Porzingis brings for, um, you know, for, for Tatum and, and, and Jalen is the same thing. So like, you know, they, like I, I, yeah, everybody seems to be on the same page and that same page is like, Whoa, we're pretty, yeah. we got a chance to be pretty good here, man. Like, <laughs> like, and that's a, you know, it's a nice page to be on. I will also though say it is also very easy to be on the same page. Like you said, when things are easy, I'm going to stop it there. Full stop. When things are easy, it's very easy to be on the same page. And I will say that we haven't seen the adversity yet. Yeah. And that's going to be an interesting part of all of this. Very easy to get caught up in all of the, 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 how great they've looked. It, I can't imagine that this preseason ha- could have gone any better for the Celtics. Um, unless you maybe threw in like, Hey, we're going to have Philly actually play their regulars. These guys are actually play their regulars and it still happened. Right. But with, without the adversity, we don't know what's going to happen. And that, that is the biggest question mark here. They have not been hit with you. You're down 20. They had that one game. Um, was it against New York or for, where, where they, they, at the end of the first half. Yeah. They they kind of stumbled and then they, through the third quarter, halfway through the third quarter, they they kind of regained like they 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 stumbled and they regained it. Okay, a little bit of the old relaxing kind of Celtics there, but we haven't seen them on Christmas against the Lakers and giving up a a twelve zero run 
and you know losing a lead now you're in the fourth quarter and it's it's a it's a battle how they handle that is going to be interesting does does somebody do they go into their uh same old well it's not working the way we've been doing it now individually Porzingis and Holiday and Jalen, they're all going to be like, no, it's my turn now. I'm going to go try to save this team because I can. Um, and that that's going to be where all of this coaching stuff kind of shows itself. Uh, we'll continue this in just a second. First, uh, today's show is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Game Time, if you want last minute tickets, then you go to Game Time Download the Game Time app. Use the code Locked On NBA. You get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute deals, flash deals, zone deals. Uh, super cool elements here. The zone deal: you pick a section. Game Time picks the seats. You get an average of an eighteen percent savings. Flash deals, sponsored deals on tickets for like football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater. It's all right there, and they've got deals on tickets right up to the start and event uh, uh, of the event, even an hour after it starts. Maybe you want to catch a comedy show and you're like, I'm going to wait until the opening acts are done. You can get a great deal on the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use that code locked on NBA, $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create the account, redeem the code locked on NBA, L O C K E D, locked on NBA for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Locked On NBA. I'm going to be hosting tomorrow, the Wednesday show, which is going to be fun because it's opening night. So I get to talk about real NBA basketball opening night. Uh, very psyched to be on that uh, initial show ushering in the season. So check out Locked On NBA wherever you got the Locked On Celtics podcast. Let's get back to Tom. Um, is there any fear for you that there's going to be like – a step back or, or when, when the excrement hits the spinning blades that these guys aren't going to be as together as maybe they are showing now in a super fun preseason against the Charlotte Hornets who suck. <laughs> right. I mean, that's always, you know, it's always a question. Right. And I think what that's going to come down to is, um, you know, honestly in kind of both regards, it's going to come down to what does no Marcus smart on the team mean? Right. Does it mm -hmm. mean that like they don't have that voice that, you know, kind of like galvanizes everybody and it's like, hey, come guys, wake up. Come on. We're better than this. Like we, right. we're supposed to be together. Do they miss that? Does it mean that, you know, they've got. I hesitate to call it smarter, but better shot takers, <laughs> guys who are going to take better shots at better times because, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, smart, I think, as as part of his galvanizing sometimes took shots that were. Um, a little more questionable in that sure, regard. So, sure. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I'm, I think that's, that's where we're going to find out the answer to that question. Um, personally, I am not that concerned. I think that when you look at like Jason Tatum, right, this guy has been around for a minute. Like he, he knows how to be an NBA player. He knows how to be an NBA superstar yeah. and he knows what's going to be required of him as he ascends now into his prime into kind of like, you know, not his final form, but like the kind of the the Jason Tatum that people are going to remember, right. Is going to be what we see over the next, what, six, seven years. Like th this yeah. is going to be like peak Jason Tatum. And as he kind of gets to that level, um, a big part of the expectation is going to be that he is, you know, leading the Celtics. And right. I'm fascinated to see what that looks like. Tatum has always done a good job of kind of, um, you know, I think a lot of times he's he's done a really nice job of like ascending to the moment. And I, I'm curious what that's going to look like when it is kind of a more interpersonal thing as opposed to just how he's playing on the court. But um, yeah, I, I, I guess I'm not that worried about it because I think these guys have been around enough. I think they mm -hmm. know what they're doing. I think that uh, it's just going to be time for some other people to step up and what that looks like is going to be really interesting. I think we're in the perfect storm for the Celtics. And th it does come with the caveat that we haven't seen we haven't seen them at their worst, right? And that's yes, going to be, uh, you know, mid January. Uh, maybe you've won a bunch of games. It's getting boring. And how do you handle that? Guys on the team talk about the process, the journey, and that's going to be part of the journey. It's going to hit every team. But 
I think they're in a perfect storm where the guys they brought in, especially Holiday, like Holiday is no nonsense. He's he's just I'm here, I'm here to do the work. I'm here to, you know, bust somebody's ass and, you know, you you got to follow my lead. And as much as I love Marcus Smart, Holiday does it in a way that's like different. And because he can get everywhere Marcus Smart could get, but he can hit the shots that Marcus Smart couldn't. Yeah. And that's he can he can just hurt you offensively in a way that Marcus Smart just couldn't on a regular basis. Every once in a while, sure. And whereas you had to use Smart in a specific way to get the most out of him. Holiday, on ball, off ball, doesn't matter. It mattered off ball with Marcus Smart. It doesn't matter with Holiday. So you got that element. I love Sam Cassell and what he's doing with Jason Tatum. Yeah. The post up stuff that that has the potential to be real bully ball kind of stuff. And that's the part that Tatum has been missing. He's been too finesse, too cute for too long. This makes me feel like, well, if Tatum's going to get in there and mix it up back to the basket and, and, bust some heads that way forget well, it when you saw him muscle kelly Oubre, it was yeah oof. like that just looks unpleasant to guard that right. doesn't look like fun at all he's too big he's too wide yeah. he can do too many things and now that he i think realizes how big he is it's like wow okay here's something here's an element where you just put tatum on the post and you he the gravity opens up everything Opens yep. up everything. So especially got, when all your centers shoot threes, like that's exactly it. Geez. Now you got that combination where, where okay, you want to run a pick and roll or something with, with Tatum and Porzingis, let's say, and Porzingis pops and okay. The, the guard stays in front of Tatum. Tatum just like, okay, yeah, I'll just turn around, back you down and read where the double's coming from and spin away from that and either hit the shot or make the pass. It's too many options. And there's, there's centers in this league that Tatum could do if they switch off poor Singus. Like, yes, yeah. it's Tatum is like legit. Like, I mean, he's looking at Al Horford eye to eye. He's yeah. standing there in the court, looking at Al Horford eye to eye. Um, he's not small. I just, I like the attitudes it's it's a different feeling when I talk to people around the facility, to, to players, talk to coaches. There's a thing there that it's unshakable. It just I see it, I feel it, and I go, these guys. They it's it's that feeling of they get it, they get it, and maybe Jalen gets it because he's now he's got his contract, so he's got nothing to worry about. He's got nothing to prove player wise. So just. I'll just kind of flow with whatever I need to do. I'll just be myself and I don't have to do too much. I don't have to try to take over. We got too many guys here that it, I don't have to do that. Poor Zingas doesn't have to be, you know, he doesn't have the pressure to be a number two. He just sets picks and gets to the open spot on the floor and goes Ooh. from there. Yeah. You know, Drew Holiday, no pressure. There's D Derek White, no pressure. He's got a contract extension coming up, but he doesn't seem to be bothered by that at all. It's Peyton Pritchard signed his extension. Like Sam Hauser is it the money is meaningless right now because he's so young and early, it's so early on. All the other guys are recently signed. It's just like the money's not an issue, the winning hasn't happened, the coaching is stepping up. Everything's coming together, man. That's why I I wrote a piece on Boston Sports Journal and said, don't make plans in June because yeah. this team I wholeheartedly believe is going to be playing basketball in June. And that, I it, I don't think I've said it that definitively ever before. I've always said they could. This team should. That's my distinction. Health-wise, you know, he health being the only yeah, caveat. That's the I biggest agree. biggest question, but. But like, but that's always the question. That's such a. For such everybody. A out, you know, you know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. like, yeah, I think if, if this team stays healthy, I see no reason. I, I agree. I, I think like. You know, and, and, and you, you, the thing that makes you hesitant about that, right, is that on, you know, October 23, 
you're already discounting a bunch of really good teams. You're already discounting Giannis Antetokounmpo and Damian Lillard. You're already discounting all that, all, you know, um, you know, improvements to it, to a lot of teams. You're already discounting the Miami heat. Like, how, how do you feel about that? I'm so done with the Miami heat. Come on, man. <laughs> but at the done. Time, it's over. <laughs> it's, it's Jover. Um, I, I mean, you know, at the same time, yeah, you, you look at the Celtics team, you look at all the stuff that's clicking into place for them. You look at all the talent that's on the floor and yeah, I mean, they are like, I, I think I've texted this to you a couple of times, but this feels like to me, like maybe the best, you know, kind of assembly of talent that we've seen since 2008. Right. 2009, maybe at like the first half of 2009 well, before KG got hurt. Like, yeah. Like this is this is an awesome awesome basketball team and yep. uh, yeah I mean stuff can happen you know guys can get hurt people can get mad at each other like things can happen things happen during an NBA season but where we sit right now this collection of talent is so good and really exciting to watch this is gonna be I think this is gonna be a fun year. There's there are teams out there can uh, the Celtics aren't like a juggernaut they're not unbeatable right they're just sure. they're just good enough and the attitudes are right everything seems right everything's in place where i think i just feel confident in them getting through all this stuff and beating these other teams right it's like you know as as people who write about the team and talk about the team professionally you want to maintain a certain level of professionalism, right? So, like, if there's other teams that are as good as the Celtics, you don't want to be like, I think the Celtics are going to be playing in June just because, you know, you want to maintain objectivity and stuff. It's just that when you look at this team now, this team specifically, it's like, yeah, I think they're the best team in the Eastern Conference. Like, yes. I, feel, yes. I, you know, I don't feel like that's a, you know, that that's not a, like, you just look at all the evidence. That's not a crazy take. That's not a, that's nothing. That's a, that is just examining all the pieces and all the competition and saying, right. yeah, I think this team is, I think they're the best. Milwaukee got Dame, but also there's some weird stuff happening with Adrian Griffin and Terry Stotts that, that caused his, his top assistant now to leave. That's yep. not great. And yep. Milwaukee is still really good. And they have question marks as well, just like Boston has question marks. We can talk and about. I think Milwaukee's question marks are significant. Like the defensive question marks are significant. They like are. The, that's not so nothing. It's. I think Boston is better than Milwaukee. I do too. I'm not sitting here saying Boston's going to sweep their way, you know, and and just play 16 games right. to win a championship. That's not how it's right. going to go. No. I'm not saying they're not going to face adversity. Um, I feel like that they have the pieces in place and the, the mindset in place to get past it. That's my thing. That's why I'm so confident in this. If they play the Milwaukee Bucks, let's say, and the Celtics play great, and Milwaukee plays better and wins, I'm not going to be upset about any of that. I never care. I never care if a team just gets beat. I never care because sometimes you lose. Sometimes the other team just beats you. I have problems with attitudes and poor effort and stuff like that. Uh, I have uh, problems with lack of game plan and lack of plan B and, and have problems with that. But if their best and your best butt heads and their best prevails, hey, you know what? You lost. You know, Both teams you played lost. hard, man. <laughs> That's it. I just am of the opinion that Boston's best butting heads with anybody else's best is now better. They should prevail. They should get to the NBA finals. They should win a championship. This is one of three teams. I think in the league right now, four Milwaukee, Boston, Denver, Phoenix, that can say we should win a championship. Now, one of them is going to do it, and three teams are going to be like, oh, we were so close. We had it right there. I think Boston is just better than those teams. End of story. I'm a little scared of uh, saying anything against Jokic because, like, that dude no, might just right. be like, it's, <laughs> it's dude's otherworldly. But, yeah. He is, I, yes. I but, think the Celtics should get there for sure. And where, where things go from there, we'll see. In Boston, um, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with the NBA Finals preview in May. 
tomorrow. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, that's tomorrow's show. It's part two okay. uh, of this podcast. Uh, I, I'm just, I've never been as confident as this in a team. Just, just the feeling that I get. And man, we'll leave it at that. All right, yeah. Tom, thank you so much. Appreciate okay, you as man. always. Yes, sir. And I appreciate all of you. You regular listeners, you everydayers, you Monday through Friday, and who are with me on the bonus podcast, people who can't get enough of the Lockdown Celtics podcast. I love you for that. Thank you so much. If you're not subscribed and you're still here at this point, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm telling you, you're going you're gonna to love it. Maybe not every show. I'm not going to be perfect, but I feel pretty good about giving you good Celtics content on this podcast. So go ahead and subscribe. This show, Monday through Friday bonus podcast every game night so make sure you're subscribed watch the show on youtube all that stuff the show is free i'm never going to have you pay for a show it's fresh it's five days a week um so i'll just leave it at that if you're inclined to share the podcast if you think wow i like what john's selling i'm going to help him do it share the podcast spread the word tell your friends they should be listening to and watching the lockdown celtics podcast it's right here on the lockdown podcast network your team every day